Mr. Prime Minister, I would like to start by asking you the first question is, how personally are you doing and how is the situation in Kyiv? Uh, I'm alive um, and uh, I'm in, in, uh, uh, in Kyiv and uh, if it's possible to be okay in Kyiv, I'm okay. I'm more or less safe uh, because if we'll compare the situation in Kyiv and situation, for example, in Mariupol, uh, Kyiv uh, is a much uh, safer place. Um, now, uh, the situation uh, is uh, terrible in Ukraine because uh, Russia um, failed uh, with uh, their like previous plan to take uh, control of our, our capital uh, in a couple of first days. They failed. Uh, they have lost initiative and they decided to change the tactics. Now they are acting like a terrorist organization. Uh, they are killing people, they are destroying houses, and uh, they are destroying infrastructure, uh, creating uh, humanitarian catastrophes uh, to create uh, pressure uh, on our government uh, and to force uh, our government to give up. Uh, it's impossible, and because Ukrainian nation will not give up. Uh, it's easy to understand. Uh, it, it's easier to understand it uh, if uh, you will look into the um, Putin's uh, goal, Putin's uh, real uh, goal uh, in this war. Uh, his goal is to destroy our nation, um, as they call it, like solve Ukrainian question. Uh, it's like Hitler wanted to solve Jewish question. Uh, Putin wants to solve Ukrainian question. Uh, this is absolutely a similar situation. Uh, and even uh, the details are similar. Uh, when Putin, uh, when uh, Hitler uh, in 1939 invaded uh, Poland, uh, he saw he told that uh, it's 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 to, to protect uh, German-speaking uh, like people, Germans, ethnic Germans from Poland, uh, from Polish people, and um, uh, now the same situation. Uh, Putin uh, is trying to explain this terrible war um, as uh, an attempt to uh, protect Russian-speaking uh, people uh, in Ukraine. Uh, it's a fake uh, narrative because I am a Russian-speaking person. For example, our president Russian-speaking person, and we have a lot of Russian-speaking people uh, in Ukraine, and there is no any problem with the language in our country. And the cities uh, they are destroying now, Mariupol, Chernihiv, Kharkiv, it's Russian-speaking uh, cities. So they are trying to destroy our nation, to kill our nation, and to force our government uh, uh, to give up and to, to install uh, the puppet uh, government controlled by Moscow uh, in Kyiv. They understand that these demands are unacceptable, of course, because we are independent, uh, free uh, democracy. Uh, and uh, the source of power in Ukraine is our people, Ukrainian people. And more than 19% of our people believe uh, and support our president, uh, Jew, uh, Russian-speaking Jew, to understand it, uh, support our president and uh, believe uh, in our victory. So we will fight till the end. This is absolutely terrible uh, war. This is not a military operation. This is a full-scale war because uh, Russia used enormous it's like a huge amount uh, a huge 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 uh, part of uh, its um, uh, troops of its military power um, it's like hundreds of thousands of people uh, like dozen thousands uh, uh, tanks uh, different battle machines artillery aircraft uh, battleships so all possible uh, tools missiles all possible tools um, uh, they can use. Uh, there, is, there are rumors, not, but not rumors actually, but information that they are uh, preparing for uh, uh, to use uh, chemical weapon uh, in Kyiv. Uh, it's terrible, but it's possible uh, because Putin uh, will not stop uh, and uh, he wants to uh, achieve uh, a victory, achieve success, uh, no matter what. 
uh, for him uh, the uh, person's life uh, so like the the, the the human life is 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 uh, means nothing uh, for him uh, people is the resources uh, and uh, it's absolutely different uh, mindset uh, it's absolutely non-western mindset uh, and uh, I believe that he will go as far as we let him go. He will not stop in Ukraine. Uh, he will go further. Moldova, Georgia, uh, Baltic countries, Finland, Sweden, even maybe Poland, because uh, Belarus already captured, already controlled. Belarus is not a state anymore. Uh, it's a puppet uh, territory uh, because um, Belarus... Uh, 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 it's like uh, has now they 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 don't have president. They have a self-proclaimed uh, person. Uh, it's like Lukashenko, and Lukashenko has power in Belarus only because of Putin. Yeah, and this is uh, very uh, like sad. Uh, but uh, we now, in fact, in reality, we have a war to, uh, between uh, uh, not only from Russia but from uh, the puppet. Uh, puppet state uh, from Belarus, from Lukashenko. Uh, this is a general description. And now in Kyiv, uh, the situation uh, is uh, complicated. Uh, city, uh, I believe that it's impossible to take uh, control over, over our capital because uh, there's uh, like uh, dozen, uh, dozen thousands of people um, with weapons, um, and not only our army, and not only our troops, not only our police, and special forces, uh, but uh, like uh, common citizens like me, uh, I, I'm, uh, uh, all of us, we are ready to fight and we will uh, stand till the end uh, for our freedom and for our independence. Um, that's that's a general description of the situation, I believe. I really appreciate that you uh, described the scene uh, for us, uh, for our viewers. Uh, you mentioned the role of other countries and what Putin is actually uh, pursuing, in your opinion. Uh, I want to, before getting into the uh, Putin's mindset, ask you, uh, Ukrainian military increased its readiness since annexation of Crimea in 2014. Uh, why do you think even that didn't stop Putin uh, from attacking your country? Because uh, uh, Russia uh, used to be a second military power in the world. And, uh, or just look uh, into the uh, amounts of money, a part of budget they spent, they have spent all this, uh, all this time, all these years uh, to militarize and to equip and to uh, upgrade the uh, capabilities, military capabilities. And uh, thanks God they have a huge corruption. And uh, because of uh, this corruption, the uh, effect of this uh, from from these uh, investments is not so uh, is not so big, but uh, it's absolutely enormous uh, money for for Ukraine and for I believe uh, every European peaceful country. They uh, were trying to be prepared for this war as uh, as as and to become as strong as possible, military as strong as possible. And um, yeah, historically, they were very militarized. And uh, maybe you, you perfectly know that Ukraine, many years ago, more than 25 years ago, uh, we gave uh, our, uh, military, our nuclear potential, our nuclear weapon to Russia. Um, 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 and... Uh, um, Western, um, the most powerful Western uh, countries uh, guaranteed us uh, that uh, we, our sovereignty and territorial integrity. Now all these guarantees uh, like looks like a fake. And uh, this is a very weak Western position because uh, they betrayed Ukraine. Uh, doubtless they betrayed Ukraine. And um, uh, eight years ago, when Putin uh, invaded uh, Ukraine, annexed Crimea, the Western uh, answer, the answer, the position of NATO, of Western leaders was uh, very weak, very vegetarian, because they were scared. 
And uh, Putin uh, understood that he can go as far as he wants to go. And that's why we have this terrible war now, because of weak Western response, because uh, values, Western values, uh, um, this looks like an empty sound for Western leaders. And uh, that's uh, why it, and it's not about mil uh, like legal obligations. It's not about some, I don't know, alliances. It's about, it's about uh, real values. Because now we see how Putin just destroying our cities, just destroying our cities. It's like they are bombing and shelling Mariupol. They destroyed more than, um, according to Mariupol administration data, uh, more than 80% of the houses in, in, in the city. Just imagine, just imagine this. It's uh, terrible. The uh, south, uh, um, um, dozen thousands of uh, people uh, died already, civilians. More than uh, 2 million people already forced to leave their houses and move from the country. Just, just imagine, just realize it. And NATO doing nothing. Not nothing, actually, but it's like too little too late, you know, too little too late. And Putin recognized only power. And now he see that Western leaders are scared one more time. They scared one more time. So my main message to Western leaders, there is no any reason to be scared. There is any reason to be scared. There is a very good time to, uh, to, to show the power to Mr. Putin, because Mr. Putin in Russia recognize only military power. And, all, and uh, economic sanctions, especially partial economic sanctions, it's not enough. It's very um, weak position. And this weak position enforce Mr. Putin to go further. And he will go as far as we let him go. Uh, you're a lawyer. Uh, have you uh, I know you're a, not an international lawyer, but you're a lawyer and you, I mean, care about what you say and how you uh, analyze things. Have you personally seen clear evidence of war crime in Ukraine? Of course, of course. You should be blind not to see them. Uh, they, are, they are using uh, artillery to destroy uh, it's like peaceful cities. They are killing uh, like civilians. So it's uh, they are using missiles to destroy uh, it's like block of flats, apartments. It's it, 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 you should be blind not to see this. And this scale already uh, it's like industrial. I'm sorry, this scale already huge. It's not a, it's like one episode. Is already a not it, even trend, it's already industrial scale. And he will destroy as more, uh, like uh, as, 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 as much as he can. He will kill as many Ukrainians uh, as he can, Russian speaking Ukrainians uh, as, uh, as he can. So um, one, I'm a lawyer, you're right, but it's not about legal obligations now. Because we see that existing uh, world order uh, doesn't work. Uh, the Security Council of United Nations, it's, it's a fake. It's like it's a fake. This organization can do uh, nothing. This organization just observing this uh, full-scale war, uh, the, the biggest country in Europe, uh, in the world, attacked uh, the biggest country in Europe without any reason, just to destroy a nation. And United and um, uh, Security Council uh, of United Nations just absorbing and just deeply concerned. So it, this is absolutely fake tool. And I believe that this is if the end of this uh, post-World, post uh, Second World War era. This is an end. And we should, in the new era, we should find and you are uh, useful instruments to solve these uh, such kind of problems. Because the spiral of violence already uh, is like, um, so the, the, we, we will have more and more and more violence every day uh, if we will not stop this terrible war as soon as possible.
So it's not about legal obligations. It's not about existing alliance. This is a new era. And we, we should realize that the instruments, the tools from the previous era, like uh, uh, Security Council of United Nations, even uh, like NATO, doesn't work. What you will do if uh, tomorrow uh, uh, Russia will attack uh, Finland? What you will do if uh, tomorrow La Russia will attack Georgia, Moldova, Sweden? What you will do? You will observe. So it's like, I believe that uh, it's absolutely unacceptable and it's against the Western basic values just to observe and do nothing uh, like Western leaders uh, acting now. This is very weak uh, position. And uh, as Churchill said, uh, if you between uh, shame and war, you choose shame, you will have shame and war at the same time. This is exactly the same situation. Yeah, very powerful. Uh, you, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, renegotiated the uh, Ukraine-Russia uh, gas contract uh, a few years ago. Uh, can uh, EU uh, ever join the US in banning Russia's energy? First of all, um, it's painful for uh, European Union, but it's much less painful than uh, Ukraine uh, experience in uh, now. It's much less painful. Uh, so it's even impossible to compare this uh, this this difference. Um, I believe all of us, all Western world, all people of a free world, should realize that now uh, uh, it's a period of time when we are together uh, should fight against for our freedom actually against the evil against the new Hitler as soon as possible, no matter what. And it's not a question of price. It's not a question of economic interests. It's not an, a question because you guys will be next. You will be next. Uh, now, China probably will, uh, will follow this example. And what will you do? You will stand aside. And one more time, this is a spiral of violence. And if you will not stop Putin, uh, he will go further and other countries, other authoritarian countries will go further together maybe. So uh, mm, I believe that Western world, Western leaders uh, should realize that uh, eight years ago when this war exactly started, was started, uh, they made a mistake. And now this is a good time just now to fix this uh, mistake and to fix, to, to fix this problem. Because every single day, the price will, uh, like, will, will become higher and higher and higher. And I'm very serious uh, when I'm uh, uh, talking about this third world war. I believe that probably, probably this is a new reality, probably we will have this third world war if the West will uh, remain uh, it's like observing and uh, using only uh, economic sanctions. Now, what we do really need is a total economic isolation, total economic trade and financial isolation. No matter what, it's not a matter of price. It's not a matter of economic uh, damage. And uh, now it's a it's it it's like we are in a new, uh, absolutely new era. We probably will have third world war, maybe with nuclear power. This is a reality. And this is a result of mistakes, Western leaders' mistakes. And now, as soon as possible, it's necessary to solve these mistakes, to solve these problems. You mentioned that you were a Russian-speaking uh, Ukrainian. You speak uh, Russian and probably, uh, as many Ru Ukrainians know a lot about uh, Russian history. Uh, when uh, President Putin in uh, his essay in July 2021 was titled on the historical unity of Russians and Ukrainians. He was referencing to conversion of the Grand Prince of uh, Kiev to Christianity. He's, he wrote, the spiritual choice made by Saint Vladimir still largely determines our similarity today. How do you personally define Putin? Is he an 
angry former KGB? Is he a Eurasianist or a Russia's latest czar? He is a typical crazy strongman who realized himself as a person with a, a unlimited power in Russia and unlimited power in the world because he think that he is the most powerful pe- person in the world and he want to change the world uh, and he want to create a Russian world uh, to realize his uh, uh, fake ideas. Um, for example, just one example, Ukrainian language has more similarity with Poland, Polish language than with Russian language. Uh, even the most more similarity with Belarus language uh, and, uh, and with Czech language uh, as with Russian language. So we are very different. We are absolutely un- like separate nation. But Mr. Putin uh, think uh, uh, not about people. He think about territory. He realized that, okay, it was a Soviet Union and the Soviet Union, the collapse of Soviet Union was a main strategy of, 20, uh, of um, uh, 20th century. Not Second World War, not First World War, but the collapse of Soviet Union. Realize it. This is a main geopolitical catastrophe of, uh, of uh, um, previous century. And uh, he won a um, um, it's like build a uni- uh, Soviet Union one more time. He want to rebuild Soviet Union one more time. And for him, people doesn't like doesn't matter. Doesn't matter that the biggest uh, one of the biggest uh, European nation, Ukrainians, in the middle of Europe, because geographically Ukraine in the middle of Europe. Um, and it's like wants to leave in a separate, independent, and democratic country. This is our choice, and we want to we, we wanna live in peace. Ukraine never attacked uh, neighbors, never, uh, it's like, uh, we are a peaceful nation. We want to live in peace. We want to cooperate. We want to trade, do business. I don't know. We want to live. We, we are living, uh, it's like, we don't have any problems with, with, with the religions, all our church in Ukraine. So we have a diversity here. So this is a freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of beliefs. So Ukraine is a European free country. And for Putin, this is a main threat because uh, for him, uh, free society, free European country as a neighbor, especially with a huge part of Russian speaking population is a threat to his, uh, to his model, to Kremlin, because he don't want to have democracy in, in Russia. And it means that he, wanna, he should destroy democracy uh, uh, in Ukraine. He should destroy Ukraine because Ukrainian people are free people. So I define uh, Putin like a crazy guy because he is living in a fake world and he want to uh, using and realizing himself like uh, the most powerful uh, person in the world. He want to uh, change the world and create a fake Russian world uh, on the huge territory, no matter what. And for him, uh, it's like there is no any limits, it looks like. And he recognized only power. Only if you, a European United States uh, it's like all Western world will show him that it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable to use a military power in the 21st century. This is the only way how to stop him. Economic sanctions will not stop him. There are lots of talk about Putin himself, but I'm sure you know better than anyone that there are people behind this idea that Putin is pursuing. One of them is Alexander Dugin in his uh, The Foundations of Geopolitics. He says, Ukraine as an independent state with certain territorial ambitions represents an enormous danger for all of Eurasia. He's not the only one. We've heard this kind of thing even from Alexander Solzhenitsyn. There are uh, so many people in Russia they are propagating this sort of stuff. And I'm sure you know that the recent polls shows that 
over 70% of uh, Russians are supporting this war in your country. What is your reaction to those uh, claims and comments? My reaction is simple. Propaganda um, um, very efficient. It's very efficient. Now they have total, uh, uh, it's like uh, total ban uh, for freedom of speech. They closed and destroyed uh, all possible uh, sources of alternative information, even social media. So um, they are living in a fake world. And in this fake world, there are some people who was like, uh, with, 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 uh, uh, I don't know, role of thinkers, it's like ideologists of this fake world, uh, like Mr. Dugin. And he's living in a fake world. He believes that this world is existing. So uh, he thinks that Ukraine uh, is not a state and Ukrainians is not a nation. Okay, but it's like he believes uh, that, uh, that Ukraine uh, aliens, I don't know. Or it's like, I don't, I don't think we should even comment it because it's absolutely fake, uh, fake world, fake story, fake beliefs. Uh, there is no any evidences or basis, historical basis uh, behind it. Uh, if you look into Russian culture uh, uh, closer, we will realize that the Russian culture uh, were a part of European culture, actually, uh, historically. So uh, they were very close uh, uh, with German, with French culture, with, with general European trends. It was a part, a bench of um, uh, European culture. So I, I understand that uh, Russian uh, culture is not a civilization, separate civilization. There is no any reason to uh, consider uh, this. It's just a uh, uh, authoritarian regime. And this authoritarian regime, uh, kleptocracy, uh, needs uh, some fake story uh, to feed uh, uh, poor people, poor population, uh, and to, to uh, create uh, alternative reality to explain them why they are poor. It's very simple. This is a typical authoritarian playbook, I believe. Uh, they need poor population, mislead it and misoriented people. Uh, like the main reason is, a, and the main answer is a like total massive propaganda. It's understandable. And that's actually uh, why it's very dangerous. This, that's why it's very dangerous. Because uh, when I uh, tell you that Putin will not stop, I mean that, um, okay, uh, let's imagine that Putin in a couple of next uh, couple of weeks will fail totally military in Ukraine. What's next? What's next? Um, he will go further. He will raise the stakes. He will use chemical nuclear power because he can't lose. Because for him, this loss means death. Because he is a strong man. He will be killed by his, uh, I don't know, his people around him. Because people don't want to live in Northern Korea, one more Northern Korea. Because Russia is too big to be in Northern Korea. And um, he will be killed. So uh, to become, uh, to stay alive, he should show a power. So we, he will go further and he will mobilize uh, uh, Russian people. He can create an uh, army with the millions of people, like theoretically, but he can. And, um, and he can, he can, he, he will think, he will see that, uh, such countries like Finland, for example, or Moldova, or Sweden, or Baltic countries, or Poland, anyway, uh, they help Ukraine. And Ukraine will not give up. And what should he do? He should raise the stakes. And how to raise the stakes? To attack other countries. Because anyway, anyway, all Western world is against him. He will organize terrorist uh, attacks. 
uh, and uh, with all his state resources, realize it with FSB. And it's not like uh, uh, um, 9-11. It could be more dangerous, much more dangerous, I believe. So we need to stop him now as soon as possible. Uh, since um, uh, we have not hundred thousands, but still, uh, but but at this moment, a dozen thousands uh, people uh, dead, because in a, in a month it will be hundred thousands, and in a two months it could be millions, millions people dead in Europe. Mr. Uh, Honcharuk, uh, Dimitro uh, Koleba, Ukraine's foreign minister, uh, he spoke to me. Uh, I was just asking uh, about the Ukrainian foreign minister who spoke to Iranian foreign minister ahead of his visit to Moscow. And I'm sure you've seen that tweet. He tweeted that Iran is against the war in Ukraine, supports a peaceful solution, and ask to, I asked to convey my message uh, in Moscow. Do you think uh, Iran is a good messenger? You know that Iran didn't vote even uh, in UN General Assembly to condemn this in invasion. I think that it's important to have peaceful position from every country in the world. Iran, China, India, I don't know, even Northern Korea, because Ukraine want to live in peace. So it's good to have this position from Iran, but it, it means nothing. Like, I, 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 I think that it means nothing. Uh, it's a signal to Mr. Putin, but it means nothing because uh, Putin uh, is a very experienced politician. And he don't need such kind of single signals. He understands the situation very well. Um, and he understands that he can't lose. Because for him, the loss means death. He can't lose. So uh, until we stop him military together, uh, uh, he will um, produce more deaths, more uh, catastrophes, humanitarian catastrophes, more uh, like damage. He will try to create a desert uh, uh, on the territory of Ukraine. And uh, it's unacceptable, of course. Uh, because uh, this war, uh, now it's possible to stop this war. But I believe that in a couple of weeks, maybe uh, it will be impossible to stop this war. This is what, uh, what we, we should realize. Can I ask you something about the UN? The UN uh, has just warned against the negative impact of uh, war on the production of wheat in Ukraine. Uh, you know that uh, Ukrainian government just uh, put a ban on export of key agricultural uh, um, goods. And do you think uh, we're going to see another famine in uh, Ukraine or in across uh, Europe the way that it happened uh, almost 100 years ago? I think that the world is much more, much better prepared for this. Uh, but it, it will uh, depend on the scale of this war, uh, for sure. If uh, this war uh, will continue uh, even a couple of months, we for sure will have uh, hunger uh, on, a, on some regions on the planet, because Ukraine is one of the biggest producers. Uh, and uh, this is a, a real uh, problem. So I know that for sure uh, the, there are some tools to, um, um, I don't know, to compensate, yeah, to, 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 um, to solve this problem, yeah? Some part of this problem. But it will depend on uh, the real scale of this problem. And the scale of this problem will depend on when this war will be, will be, will, will end actually. So uh, this is one more reason why we need to stop this war as soon as possible. Uh, but one more time, for Putin, uh, it doesn't matter because for him, for his regime, for his authoritarian regime, like 
uh, person's life uh, means us. As probably everybody knows that uh, you were prime minister of Ukraine uh, for almost a year. You were close to President Zelensky and then you had some issues uh, with him. How do you see uh, his leadership uh, at this moment for your country? Uh, I think he, he's doing a perfect job. Uh, yes, uh, he um, made some mistakes uh, before the war, uh, but it doesn't matter now because he's doing a great job. He's, uh, he showed himself like a big leader, great leader, and uh, I appreciate it. Uh, so um, I believe that uh, in Ukraine, Ukraine is a democracy. And in Ukraine, uh, he's not um, um, a reason. Uh, he's not a reason why uh, people, Ukrainian people, uh, fight him. Uh, but he is uh, for sure a strong leader and big stimul, and uh, maybe even a symbol of our uh, fight. So he's a very important person now, and um, and he's doing a great job. Alexei Honcharuk, uh, very, thank you very much for your time and the very frank discussion. Thank you very much for your support and attention, guys. It's very important for us.